Hello everyone, hopefully you all are studying really well with consistency and confidence and calm mind and happiness because happiness leads to all the good things in your life. If you are happy, you can do all, everything nicely. So be happy, study consistently and don't get confused if exam dates change once again. Why? Because if you get confused and you stop studying, you will be breaking your consistency of study and you will be wasting your valuable time at this moment. This is very vital time. Invest it in your studies and get good percentage in your board exams because eventually board exams will happen one day and there's no excuse for them. There's no option to avoid them. So remember this thing, don't get confused, study nicely and study with confidence and happiness. Right. So let's start with our topic. Our topic for today is budget part two that is structure of budget and today we'll discuss Budget receipts and budget expenditure. Budget receipts, it's of two types that is revenue receipts and capital receipts. Again, budget expenditure is also of two types, capital receipts and revenue receipts, uh, revenue expenditure and capital expenditure. Okay, so like us, as we earn some income and we spend it on something, that means we have our sources of income and, and we spend and we have our items of expenditure also. Likewise, government too gets its revenue from certain sources and it undertakes certain expenditure on certain things of uh, administration or law and order on general public or welfare on general public. So we'll be discussing it right now. Okay. So budget receipts here, you need to remember only one thing in budget receipts. Here revenue receipts are given and capital receipts are given. That means you are getting something. Government is getting money from somewhere. But getting money in the form of revenue receipts means that no asset liability is concerned. That means revenue receipts are those receipts of the government where there is no increase in liability of the government or decrease in assets of the government. That means no asset or liability are created for the government. Right? Here... We have two types of revenue receipts. Number one is tax receipts and number two is non-tax receipts. Right? Tax. What is tax? Tax is compulsory payment of government by households, firms and institutions. Simply. Compulsory. Why? Because if government levies tax on any particular individual, he is bound to pay. That's why it is compulsory to pay tax. If see, some income tax is levied on me by the government department, any government uh, agency, then I'll have to pay that tax. So, that is compulsory to pay taxes to government by households, firms, and institutions. Who pays them? Households pay them, like people like us pay them, or firms, that means factories or uh, production units pay them, or institutions pay them, any organizations pay them, right? So, what are different forms of these type examples of tax that is number one is income tax that is tax levied on the earnings of person on the income of any person is known as income tax here in india income up to 2.5 lakh rupees is tax free that means no tax is levied up to income of 2.5 lakh rupees from 2.5 to 5 lakh rupees 10 percent of rate is levied that means income is taxed right government puts tax on that Corporation tax. Next is corporation tax. Corporation, you understand? Any uh, industry, any factory or any firm which is engaged in production of something. So, the income of that firm or factory is also taxed by government. So, that is known as corporation tax. Suppose, income of any corporation is 50 lakh rupees, uh, sorry, 50 crore rupees, then it may be taxed at the rate of 25%. I may take my marker. Yes. So here, 50 crore rupees, suppose the tax is 25% can be levied on that. Here right now the taxation, assessment taxation is 25%. Okay, then comes your estate duty. What is estate duty? A person who has died, his property is assessed and the tax on that property of that person who has uh, left the world is known as estate duty. And in India, it has been abolished, abolished in the year of 1985. And it was 85% of the property assessed, right? So, the tax on dead people's uh, property uh, is known as estate duty. Then gift tax. Gift tax is the tax which is levied on the gifts that you receive. That means, if my father gives me a house, 
ठीक है इन अ गिफ्ट दैट इज अ गिफ्ट फ्रॉम माई फादर बट इट विल अट्रैक्ट टैक्स फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट एंड गवर्नमेंट विल टैक्स दैट गिफ्ट That means a recipient of any gift will pay tax to the government. If I am getting a gift, I'll have to pay that tax. That is gift tax. Okay. Then customs duty. Customs duty. We normally import many items of consumption from abroad nations, from different nations. The item, uh, the tax that is levied on imported items is known as customs duty. Excise duty. What is excise duty? duty or tax that is levied on production of narcotics liquor or uh, some type of hazardous items or petroleum products is known as excise duty that is it is levied on production it is not levied on income of any factory it is levied on production why to discourage production of these items like liquor cigarettes narcotic products any type of drugs which cause um, which come under narcotics uh, category is taxed so that it can discourage consumption to discourage consumption discourage their production so government levies taxes on them such like the liquor factories or breweries it levies taxes on them that is known as excise duty next we have types of taxes what are different types progressive and regressive value added and specific direct and indirect progressive taxation you can see the word progressive it comes from progress that means increasing here when the taxation or taxable per, tax percentage increases with increase in income that means amount of tax increases with increase in uh, income that is known as progress that means it is increasing with income regressive that means a tax whose burden decreases with increase in income that is known as regressive tax for example gst the burden of taxation of gst lies more heavily on poor people than rich people that is regressive taxation value added and specific value added tax is a tax which is levied on the value added by any producer on that particular commodity for example in manufacture of bread the value added by a baker or the bakery on bread is known uh, is taxed and that particular tax is known as value added tax that means amount of value added is Taken into consideration when the any commodity is taxed, then direct and indirect taxation. Here, see, we are discussing all these points in very short while because we don't have that much of time. We can discuss in detail and in twelfth standard, you don't need detailed discussion of all these topics. So I am discussing just in short. Okay, then direct and indirect differentiation of direct and indirect is very important. It may come in exams also. Here, direct taxation was what is direct. A direct tax is paid by person on whom it is levied. On whom it is levied, legally imposed. Okay. See, for example, income tax. Income tax. Suppose it is levied on me. That means I have to pay it. It's levied on the person, and it is legally paid by the person on whom it is levied. Okay. Burden not shifted. That means burden of direct tax cannot be shifted. If I have to pay my income tax, that burden cannot be shifted to my neighbor or on any other person. i will have to pay my income tax because it's my income and on that taxes has been levied okay then progressive it is progressive as the income increases the rate of tax of income direct tax also increases like income tax and corporate tax see income tax increases with increase in income like in india up to 2.5 lakh rupees there is no tax and after that 10% tax is levied and after 5 to 10 lakh rupees 20% is levied after that 30% is levied that means as income increases tax is also increase the income tax is progressive in nature right and corporate tax is also progressive in nature larger firms have to pay high amount of tax okay and smaller firms whose income is less they have to pay less amount of tax indirect tax that means that is indirectly paid that is means it is levied on person a and paid by person b for example when anyone produces some any producer produces a commodity support biscuits he produces biscuits and if the cost of that production is anything suppose 4 rupees or something like that okay and tax is 1 rupee so what he will do he will price that commodity for 5 rupees in this tax is include included he has paid this tax but he is taking that tax from us why because when we go to buy that particular packet of biscuit we have to pay 5 rupees 
But in reality, that packet costs only four rupees. It would have cost only four rupees, but we are paying five rupees because we are paying Mr. A's taxation. This tax was levied on Mr. A, that is producer. Okay, but we have to pay this tax as a consumer. The consumer is paying it. So the tax which was to be paid by producer, it is paid by consumer. That means what is happening? Imposed on one, paid by another. It was imposed on producer and it was paid by consumer. Next, burden can be shifted. Its burden has been shifted and can be shifted. How? The whole burden of this tax, suppose GST or any type of tax, production tax has been shifted on the consumer. Corporate taxes are the forms of tax whose burden can be shifted on consumers of the commodities of any type like cars, scooters, any commodity. Consumers have to pay the taxes in the indirect form. It's like like uh, on biscuits, on soaps, on shampoos, every time on this, this market also, I have to pay the tax which was paid by the producer. So, I am paying the tax which was to be paid by the producer, right? Then, regressive. It is regressive. Why? Because, suppose, take for example this packet of biscuit. If a person who earns only 100 rupees per day, he will also have to purchase this, uh, buy this packet of biscuit for 5 rupees. And a person whose income is 10 lakh rupees per month, okay, he too will have to pay only 5 rupees for this. So, its burden is falling more on the person who is earning only rupees 100 and not rupees 10. It, this burden will be less on this and more on him. That means this is regressive or not? That means it is decreasing with increase in income right then we have non-tax receipts of government non-tax receipts includes fees and fines what is fees fees is like uh, we pay license fees for getting a license of driving license or anything like that so we pay fees to the government and that fee is received by the government as revenue received then fines when we break any traffic rules we have to pay some fines that go also goes to the revenue receipts then escheat escheat is the property that is left by any person who has died and there is no legal claimant of that property no one is the heir, heir to that property there is no legal claimant and no one can claim that property there has was no nomination for that property that is left without any heir that means that is heirless property h-e-i-r there is no one no son no daughter no legal claimant for that property and that property goes to the government so this is a form of revenue risk for the government public sector units income income of public sector units like Bhel, BHEL, GAIL, SAIL, Steel Authority of India Limited, Gas Authority of India Limited, Bharat Heavy Earth Movers Limited, BME, BEML and all. These are public sector units. Okay. Special assessment. That means public sector units have the income and that income goes to your um, government in the form of revenue receipts. And special assessment. Special assessment of property. That means, for example, if Price of any property increases owing to any developmental work undertaken by the government that is known as special assessment. For example, if my house costs rupees 1, uh, so 1 crore and after building of highway, construction of highway in near vicinity of my house, the price of my house increased to 3 crore rupees. That means 2 crore rupees in form of uh, this special assessment can be assessed and government can Ask for special assessment on our property. Sale of spectrum like 2G, 3G, that too are undertaken by the government and revenue from these uh, sale goes to government in form of revenue receipts. Then grants, donations like Prime Minister Relief Funds, donations to Prime Minister Relief Fund, other type of funds during time of floods, famines, or any type of mishap that goes to, all goes to government in form of revenue receipts. Grants by different governments or different uh, nations or any uh, organization goes to government. Okay. These are tax and non-tax incomes or even receipts of the government. Okay. Now, we move on to capital receipts. What are capital receipts? See, for example, whenever we want some capital, what do we do for any business? See, uh, if I want to open some factory or farm, what I will do? I will get some capital by either selling my property mortgaging my property or I, I will take loan from some my kinship from my near uh, and dear ones from my siblings or from some bank what will happen in that case what will it do it will either increase my
my liability that means i have to pay loan ha loans have to be repaid that means it is increasing my liability and or either uh, or it is decreasing my assets if i have to sell my uh, shop my land or any other assets that means if i have to sell them that means assets are decreasing that means capital receipts are receipts of the government which either increases liability of the government or decreases assets of the government clear clear definition that means it these are the receipts which either increase the liability of the government or decrease assets of the government this is in your book and i am referring to tr jnvk overy book you can refer to that book okay or whichever book is there you can write for the in comment section also if you have any confusion then types of capital receipts number 1 recovery of loans recovery of loans here receipts come from loans which have been given to the state governments by central government in certain cases central government gives loans to state government for their assistance and when they uh, these loans are repaid by state government this is known as recovery of loans in this case what is happening its assets are decreasing because loan has been repaid okay when is giving loan to the state government assets were created in at the time of recovery of loans its assets are decreasing that means it is capital receipts then borrowing and other liabilities borrowing that means taking money from some one in time of need for any developmental work by the government so borrowing and other liabilities happen in three forms number one is general public that is known as market borrowing number two is rbi from reserve bank of india central bank of india rest of the world that means other nations foreign nations so from general public it sells securities in open market operations and uh, gets money from the public and what it is doing it is creating liability for the government because it is selling securities and they will have to be repaid with interest to the public okay in near future then loan from the rbi again when anyone takes loans its liability increases okay then rest of the world again it's taking loan or help from them again its liability is increasing so capital receipts are the receipts which increase liability of the government then other receipts disinvestment in this case public sector units the units of public sector units which are not functioning well which are sick which are under some problem so these units can be given to public sector can be sold to public sector and their their ownership can be given to public uh, private sector in this case this ownership is transferred to whom private sector right now in 2020 23 ventures public sector ventures has been selected for disinvestment by selling the shares of public sector units or by selling the units of public sector units government gets money from them and in this manner it is receiving money but it this is in decreasing the assets of the government again this is capital receipts so disinvestment causes decrease in assets of the government it selling its property public sector units so it is decreasing its assets right then come to expenditure expenditure means spending something on certain works or certain property or uh, that is buying some property or establishing certain production unit okay so what does government do government do or does its uh, expenditure in two forms remaining expenditure and capital expenditure again we will see that in remaining expenditure there is neither increase in assets what are even receipts which causes neither increase in assets or leads to decrease in liability okay it neither decreases liability or increases assets here error has been made no has been written that means no asset increase and no liability decrease okay then types of your revenue expenditure number 1 wage bill of the government government pays wages to different government sector employees to all the defense personnel and other people who are engaged in government sector or public sector units so this is wage bill of the government and that is your revenue expenditure that means government is not getting anything in return it is not increasing its assets or decreasing its liability that means it's not repaying loan repayment of loan is not here okay interest payment only interest payment is here and this comes under revenue expenditure when it's paying interest uh, payment that is that is it is not decreasing its liability or not creating assets expenditure on subsidies government pays or gives subsidies on cylinders on lpg cylinders or on public distribution shops 
in, in your ration shops to poor people or subsidies for production of certain items to the uh, SMEs that you, that means small and medium enterprises okay so this type of expenditure on subsidies given by the government is considered under your revenue expenditure okay. clear then capital expenditure capital again capital expenditure is the expenditure which either decreases liability of the government or increases assets of the government expenditure where normal person undertakes any expenditure does any expenditure what does he do he either buys any property any building any machinery or anything like that okay for his own sake or our assets okay so it increases the assets of public likewise for the government also where it undertakes any expenditure it increases the assets of the government and decreases liability like in repayment of loans it decreases liability okay so here what are different forms of capital expenditure number one is expenditure on land and building government establishes certain production units and for that it buys land building etc in that case it increases its assets so it is capital expenditure now expenditure on machinery and equipment it buys machinery and equipment from other nations for defense persons also again it increases its assets then purchase of shares government buys shares of and other enterprises or MLCs in that case also it increases its assets then loans of central government to state government where central government gives loans in form of assistance to state government that is also your capital expenditure okay then loan repayment loan repayment that means if government has taken loan from RBI okay it has to repay it and then when it is repaying that loan, it is decreasing liability of the government. Or it has taken loan from International Monetary Fund, again it is repaying that loan, that means it is decreasing liability. Okay, the burden of loan on central government or the government. Okay, so loan repayment also comes under your capital expenditure. Then, last we have the point of uh, the topic of plan expenditure and non-plan expenditure. Again you can see from the chart, plan, non-plan. Plan means whatever you have planned in advance, that is your plan expenditure. Likewise for the government, all the specified plans and programs of development, that is expenditure done on them is plan expenditure. For example, if government decides in advance or plans to build 100 schools for girl education in year 2001, that is plan expenditure. Okay, then again assistance of central government to state government, if Government of India, the central government of India decides to forward a loan of 10 crore rupees to uh, that means Kerala or Jharkhand or any other state that is assistance of central government to state government that again is plan expenditure. It is planned in advance that it will forward loan or it will uh, build any roads or schools. Okay, this is plan expenditure. Then non-plan expenditure, the expenditure that comes unplanned that is not planned in advance like Routine functioning of government. Routine functioning that means whatever is happening in government, if some minister is coming, if some ambassador is coming from other nation on a trip to India or a tour to India, okay, visit to India, that is routine functioning of the government. It can happen. Expenditure law and order. During times of some uh, famines, floods, there can be certain expenditure which are non-planned or in certain terrorist attacks, it happened in Hotel Taj of Mumbai, at that time there was um, like very heavy expenditure on uh, these type of law and order situations, so it comes under the non-planned expenditure, so we have no plan and non-planned expenditure. I hope whatever topics we have discussed here, you might have understood them and if there is certain problem, you can certainly send us or write us uh, to in comments and then we'll be more than happy to solve them and keep watching our videos, keep connected to us, keep showering love on our channel. Thank you so much.